Hi, I'm Vivian. And I'm Samantha. And this is Burger of the Week. Each week, we discuss an episode of the Fox animated series Bob's Burgers, and we create a themed burger based on the episode. This week, we're talking about Season 2, Episode 7, Moody Foodie. This episode was written by Stephen Davis and Kelvin Yu, and was directed by Buon Lin and Kyung Hee Lim, and aired May 6, 2012. So, we have a new guest host this week. Hi, everybody. It's my best friend, Samantha. She decided uh, to join me this week. So, Sam, what are your first impressions of this episode? Do you like it? Uh, Yeah, I do. I I did really like it. I thought it was funny. Um, There's something about watching with the intent of podcasting that made it a little bit more interesting, I think, because I was actively Hmm. watching. Okay. So is it a favorite? Is it just kind of okay? Oh, that's a big question. (laughs) Um, I don't know if it's a favorite. I think uh, Bob's a bit too crazy for me in this ep- episode, so. Mm. Yeah, he kind of goes off the rails at the end. <laughs> I think, like, I prefer the more traditional tropes of the show. Like, just when they kind of fit more into their regular character type roles. And so okay. this was a bit of a spinoff for me. Like, it was not really a spinoff, but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Hmm. So do you want to give us a little bit of your history with the show? When did you first start watching? I actually don't know the specific date I first started watching, but I know it was pretty recently. I want to say this year, maybe. Really? Um, I, you could probably answer this question better than I could, because you were <laughs> actually the one that introduced me to Bob. So I'm a big uh, cartoon fan overall. Like, I love The Simpsons and Futurama, um, Rick and Morty and shows like that. And so animated TV is really, really my thing. And so, yeah, I remember you had mentioned it to me and I was like, oh, I don't know. I don't know if I like <laughs> Bob's. And then uh, I'm really glad I gave it a shot because I think it's really funny and super cute. So mm-hmm. not that long ago, I'm a pretty, pretty new Bob's Burgers watcher okay have you been watching like are you current right now what is current right now uh season seven wow guys if you're listening to this <laughs> and the current season is like season 11 then you're just listening to this kind of late but that's fine welcome <laughs> um i think that we may have gotten that far but we tend to watch things out of order like we, we uh, put things on a playlist and put it on random and because bob's is the type of show you can watch in isolation mm-hmm. um I think that my timeline of the show might be a little bit mixed up in my head. Right. Okay. Do you have a favorite character? My gut instinct is Tina. Her awkwardness really speaks to me. Just like her like <laughs> her like groaning out of nowhere. Just like, uh no, that's not the right tone. Uh, there's, there's, a whole, there's a whole, I think, clip uh in one of the other episodes of them all groaning and all doing it wrong, and that was nowhere near close to the proper groan. Um, no, I don't think I can do it. That's okay. Her awkward groaning at life. Um, my fiance, Devin, and I will be around the house groaning at each other whenever things are awkward. <laughs> uh, so I don't know why I can't replicate it right now, but... Uh... Do you have a least favorite in the Bob's family? Well, the Belcher family, I should say. Oh, the Belcher family? <laughs> I was like, I have a couple least favorite characters overall. But oh. in the... Okay. No, I like them all. I don't oh, know if there's good. a least favorite. Okay. Within the Belcher family. Who are your least favorites? Does Linda's sister favorites? count? As Belcher family? <laughs> no, extended Belcher family? Like, she's not a Belcher. She's whatever Linda's maiden name I was going to ask you if you knew that. There, There's no... It's never been announced. Mm. So I have no idea what Linda's maiden name is. <laughs> Did you which... imagine it's actually Burger? Oh my gosh. Linda Burger. <laughs> oh, terrible. No, she's Linda Hot Dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, terrible. So Gail is your least favorite? Um, no, but I'm blanking on his name right now. Mr. Frond? No. Mr. Fishouter? No. Oh, man. Um. He's got a name, but he's not a mister? He, he, uh, he Teddy? He's always seen with, uh, um, Ron the Broccoli Stock. Oh, Hugo. <laughs> Hugo. <laughs> Hugo. I think it's maybe his voice. Oh, yeah. It's not the most pleasant to listen to. And he's just so desperate. Like, Mm -hmm. I just feel so sad for him. Like, I just kind (laughs) of pity him. Like, he just clearly, like, loves Linda to his core. And then even when he dates, uh, is it? When he's dating Gretchen. Very briefly in that one episode. Lobster Fest. 
Okay. Yeah. Like, so it just seems like even when he's dating Gretchen, he's still doing it just to show off to Bob and Linda. Like, like his whole life is just to show off to them about how he's better but he's not he's just really sad and the showing off just shows how sad he is it's just it's kind of cringeworthy yeah so he's my my least favorite i could avoid the the scenes or the episodes where he's mainly featured like those would be my least favorite Mm, okay what about you what's your favorite episode i don't have a favorite episode i can't like i can't just pick one but i have certain favorites and a lot of the times they're episodes that have a very prominent musical number. Mm. Um, and I can't recall the titles of the episodes. There's the great one where Linda's working at Fresh Feed and they've got that, you know, this is working song and the two of them are kind of miserable without each other. Mm-hmm. It's very sweet. I also love the episode where Bob has a little garden and he's got his his little great song while the kids are at the restaurant and he's at the garden. Yeah. I just I just love the musical numbers, I think. Yeah. So. Yeah, and he's singing to the plants to make them like, I love Bob's little little songs and the way he talks to like inanimate things. Yes. It's really adorable. Yeah. And I don't know if I have a favorite of the Belcher family. I think my favorites are like a three-way tie between Louise, Bob, and Linda. Mm. But Tina's awkwardness is very sweet, but sometimes can be a bit too much for me. And then Jean sometimes just doesn't feel that relatable mm-hmm. to me, personally, because I'm not like him at all. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. What if you yeah. had to rank them then? Oh, Like I a one, two, know. three. Oh, that's hard. Because I love Linda so much in certain ways, but then... Now that I'm really paying attention to this show, she's doing things that bother me at times. Right now, I would say Louise, Bob, and then Linda. But they're all pretty close. Mm. I knew Louise was going to be your number one. Yeah. I don't know. There's something about her. (laughs) But even then, Bob and Louise are, like, really, really close. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's get into this episode. So for Season 2, Episode 7, Moody Foodie, the store next door was the Grindecologist Coffee Shop Supply. Oh, I just got it. You know what it was? <laughs> you just got I, it? I was like, what is that store even? And I was like, grind ecologist. And like, because I think the ecologist mm. made me think of like all of those other ecologist related things. And so I didn't. <laughs> the first I, thing wasn't gynecologist. It was. But how did then, how do you make the leap then from gynecologist to coffee? Like, I just didn't ever think of it being related to coffee until right, you said yeah. it right now. Because I'm like, oh, coffee ground. Like, <laughs> like they grind the coffee. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> I guess that's a good one. That's a thinker. <laughs> oh, it's over my head, clearly. The exterminator van was Mr. Stompy's pest control. <laughs> that was pretty clever, I gotta say. Yeah, I like it. I loved that the the logo was just a boot with like a cockroach. Yeah. So I'm just imagining hiring this company to come in to clear pests out, and they're just gonna put on boots and stomp around my house. <laughs> Like, not actually use any kind of pests, like, chemicals or anything. Just just stomp it around. Yeah, it's like you invite a bunch of river dancers to come over. (laughs) And they've all got really heavy boots. It's just your floors would get wrecked. (laughs) Yeah. Maybe that's why he only shows up once. (laughs) Yeah. Bob never asked him to come back again. (laughs) We had a few burgers of the day. We had If Looks Could Kale... We had Little Swiss Bun Shine, which comes on a buttered bun, and I'm assuming also comes with Swiss cheese. And we had Girls Just Want to Have Fennel, and the final one was The Final Kraut Down. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was, was my perfect. favorite. Yeah, yeah, that's the best one, I think. <laughs> Although if Looks Kid Kale is pretty great, and the Moody Foodie is really missing out if he's not going with that one. Yeah, because he doesn't order the burger of the day. Hmm. Mm-hmm. He just orders a plain cheeseburger. I don't like kale, though, so I can relate. Mm, I like kale. So we have a few new voice actors uh, doing some of our guest characters this week. We have Patton Oswald as the Moody Foodie. I know him from United States of Terra and also a very sad moment in Dollhouse, which if you know what I'm talking about, you know why I think it's sad. We had Eddie Pepitone, who's been in just a lot of stuff. If you go on IMDb, he's in a, pretty much everything who plays as Reggie. We had Russell Peters, the comedian. Do you know him, Mm -hmm. Sam? Okay. He played Tran, which was kind of interesting. Yeah. 
And we had Oscar Nunez, who's best known as Oscar from The Office, playing Pepe. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, knowing that the voice actors always throws me off, like it like like glass shattering when you <laughs> when you think back to their voices after finding out who they are. Yeah, it's it's a little odd. All right, so let's get into the episode. Bob shops for ingredients at the farmer's market with the kids. He runs into three other restaurant owners and they warn him about a tough critic, the moody foodie. So they're farmer's market. So sweet. Buys <laughs> Bob's buying his ingredients. It's nice to know that he's buying local. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it makes a lot of sense to me. Like, it just feels very Bob to to shop local and use fresh ingredients and all of that. Like, mm-hmm. I like that he's really confident in his abilities as a cook. Like, he's not, at this point, he's not worried about the Moody Foodie at all. Even no, though he yeah. just put someone out of business. Well, did he even know about it until the farmer's market? No, I don't think so. so. They were the ones who mentioned it. But he doesn't panic. He doesn't immediately think, oh man. Right. It's gonna go he's terribly. <laughs> proud of his fresh ingredients and proud of his burger. And he's like, well, I'll be fine. It's great. Mm-hmm. And then we've got the sketch artist. Yeah. Which is very sweet. But I really like that the sketch artist is just like, you don't go up to him and ask for a sketch. It's just, you describe it, you buy it. <laughs> That's it. That's it. <laughs> I would be so upset though. Like, they're just standing there having a conversation. They could describe anything. Mm-hmm. It's <laughs> just, yeah. I mean, like, you can walk away. He's not going to chase you. <laughs> probably. Yes, probably. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I but know. then you've got Tina there saying, oh, well, pay pay the man because uh, you've got a zombie on a horse with me or something like that. Oh, goodness. Yeah. Terrible. That's a lot for your money. That's $50 for that. So. Oh, no thanks. So what do you think of these other restaurants, Pepe... Tran and Reggie's places. Do they sound good? Of course not. <laughs> <laughs> totally terrible. Um, I guess your first impression isn't really altered at the farmer's market when you first meet them. You're just like, oh, these are other restaurateurs like, that have had bad experiences mm-hmm. with Moody Foodie. Um, but it's not until later when you find out that they use old food and like reuse day or two old noodles and things like that um, that i start to get really like grossed out by it yeah i wouldn't go to any of these places did you notice that tran had a bit of a jt thing going on with the hair i did (laughs) i did yeah i don't know what's up Uh, with that i just thought it was living in the past yeah right yeah yeah and then i was very surprised uh by his accent because i thought he looked very american and then like the the frosted tips really threw me off and then i found out that he wasn't actually playing an american character like the character when the first time he spoke and i was like what (laughs) really interesting i thought he they like did a fairly good job animating him Mm. to look like an asian man Mm. yeah it didn't connect for me at all i think it was just because i was too busy like making jt references in my head like (laughs) The frosted tips just threw you right off. <laughs> well, um, yeah. I don't know. It was trans, right? With the frosted tips? Yeah, it was trans. Mm. Yeah. I have no idea what the rest of his name is. And I don't recall if we see him very often later on. Mm-hmm. I know that we see Reggie a few times, mm-hmm. but I don't think we see Tran or Pepe very much. Mm-hmm. So maybe they did just go out of business. Maybe this is like a, a really elaborate reference to Justin Timberlake. You know, all the memes out there where he's got Mr. Noodles' his hair? Because he's the <laughs> trans is the noodles. Like, <laughs> See, I always think of the guy from Nickelback when I think of the ramen noodle hair. Oh, Chad really? Something. Kroger? Chad Kroger, I think. Um, I think. I'm not even going to look that up. <laughs> but yeah, I think of him when I think of ramen noodle hair. Mm. Okay, well... It's probably a stretch. Probably, but let's go with it. Let's go with it. JT Tran. (laughs) All right, we'll continue. The Belchers are suspicious of nearly every customer waiting for the Moody Foodie to show up. He finally arrives dressed as a Hasidic Jew. I kind of like that Linda thinks that his outfit's a costume, Mm. but it's also a little bit distasteful that she doesn't realize it's not a costume. I don't know. Maybe it's just not a great costume to wear. Yeah. 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 I, yeah, I don't know. I found it strange, like, I just think it's distaste- distasteful to dress mm-hmm. up, unless he is actually a Hasidic Jew, but wouldn't you actually wear that attire all the time if you were? Yes. So then... He's not. So it's, it's just, he's offensive. So, yeah. like, it's by walking in in that costume. But, like, what are you actually going to wear? It's not like you're going to show up in an astronaut outfit. Like, what are you going to wear that is makes you look like another 
person that's not culturally insensitive. I guess so. To me, I don't really understand why he wears an outfit anyway. What's the point? Well, I think it's because you'd be recognizable, right? Like if Gordon Ramsay came came into your restaurant and sat down, you'd be freaking out about Gordon Ramsay eating your food because that's Gordon Ramsay. Right. So you get a rep as a food re- reviewer from other restaurants and then everyone would like the restaurant community would tell one another that who that person is and what he looks like. Right. So okay. in order for you to give a completely unbiased and have like a like a secret shopper kind of mm-hmm. right experience He could just wear, like, a fake beard and a baseball cap. Yeah. Well, and nowadays, you can really change your face with, like, makeup and stuff without... Okay, but we skipped over the... This is a very minor thing, but I thought this joke was great. Um, The Civil Civil War joke from the, the customer that comes in before Moody Foodie. So there's the Civil War reenactor sitting at the counter, and uh, Linda makes this joke. She... Uh, like says, oh, the gray he's wearing so drab and no wonder they lost. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought it was so clever, but so quick. And then when the, um, the foodie comes in, then Jean says, oh, he must be fighting for the North. I'm not a big history person. I don't know a whole lot. Um, so what's the joke there with the gray? Like it's drab and. Do they actually wear, like, gray outfits, or is it just, oh, it's so drab, that's why they lost? <laughs> well, I'm going to admit that my American Civil War history is not, um, my, like, that's not my expertise, mm-hmm. uh, even though I, I studied history. Uh, so I know that, that gray became an iconic color for um, one side, but that it wasn't um, a unified thing that everyone wore gray on a particular side because people that joined the war would often wear what they were wearing. Um, and uh, I guess over, over time, the way history gets glorified, there became right. two colors. So the blue and the gray were the two sides. Okay. Um, there is going to be listeners that are way more informed on this joke than I am. I just thought it was clever on surface level. I gotta mm-hmm. say. That was good. I did like his reaction when he gets the phone call and he's like, these buttons are authentic and he leaves. <laughs> <laughs> Just so haughty. Now, Bob seems a little too confident when he's talking to his family because he knows what his family is like. And if he wants this to go well, Bob basically needs to do everything on his own. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So then poor little Tina walks over and she says, time for the charm bomb to explode and becomes the worst kind of waitress ever who won't leave you alone. Oh, maybe I just don't like people or something. But when no, I'm it was out, the I whole the it. whole string of events that happens when he first comes in the restaurant is really bad. It's just a disaster. And then Tina comes up and and stands way awkwardly too close and stares. Oh, oh and Linda burps in his face, and then you've got Jean. She, she walks up and says, "What's up, Palestine?" <laughs> so offensive. Does she say what's up, Palestine? Yeah, she does. Something like that, yeah. Uh, Louise, I know Louise says, um, let's talk about Palestine. Okay, so maybe that's, it was Louise. Either way, still really offensive. Which, come, it would make more sense if Linda had been the one to say it. I understand why Linda doesn't say it, because she's actually trying to do a fairly good mm-hmm. job, other than downing that beer and burping in his face, which I guess sometimes you can't help i mean don't down the beer but if you need to burp sometimes it just comes out (laughs) anyway but that line from louise let's talk about palestine doesn't really feel right to me because she wouldn't know anything about that come on she's like nine years old there's no way that's true poor bob poor bob the family just falls apart under any kind of stress oh it's really terrible but then bob He doesn't do so well either. When he goes over, he's pressuring the guy to, like, get the joke of the Mm -hmm. burger. He's like me when Jason doesn't get my puns. (laughs) And he's just staring at me and, like... Are you sure he doesn't get it, it out? No, he gets it. But sometimes he just doesn't laugh, you know? Right. Or Jason laughs very quietly. Mm. Or laughs without sound. Sometimes that happens too. That's a thing. <laughs> yes, he kind of like silently laughs, and I'm like, you know, this is like, this isn't visual. They can't see your face. You need to laugh out loud. Um, but poor Bob just sit, like waiting for the joke to hit the guy, and and then he doesn't write anything down. I'm like, really, this is the moment where you definitely write it down. 
like a very specific order. It just goes so bad. But badly. he's under so much stress, right? Like with the family just running around and, and everyone's talking and it's such a high pressure moment that I can't blame him for forgetting. It sucks. Like your heart kind of like aches for him in that moment, right? Mm-hmm. Like it's just like, oh no, like, but like <laughs> you got through the order. All you had to do was <laughs> cook it and yeah. let him enjoy your good, delicious, fresh food. Yeah, and then apparently it's not so good. He didn't really uh, do a great job. Overdone and dry. That's harsh. The review is terrible and Bob is very upset. He starts to lash out at everyone around him, even yelling at people on the street. As if uh, the newspaper review wasn't bad enough, right? They're talking about how your a review can sink your restaurant and how awful that could be. And then he goes out into the front of his restaurant where all of the people that could possibly come and eat there are and shouts his terrible review. Like, it's like a, a public service announcement. Bob does not help himself when it comes to business. He's always kind of messing well he screwed himself over Mm -hmm. a lot of the time because his behavior in public is not the greatest is at times questionable Mm -hmm. yeah i get why he's freaking out though like everyone is just telling him all these terrible things and he's really worried at this point that he's gonna lose his business just like pepe so he's not at his best i would say but i do like that louise goes out and copies bob when he goes to yell at people and she starts yelling at everyone else, you're like, oh, like, I know this is probably a moment where you realize I shouldn't do this because my child is copying me and getting bad ideas. But it's really funny on the show. Yeah, it's adorable. Yeah. Do you remember the names of the the kid, like the business that the, the kids come in with? They change their names and they come in with like a plan to improve Bob's image. Yeah, uh, sort of. Something show, anyways. It doesn't really matter, but I thought. So it's like Juarez and Molino uh, and something. Something with an S, I feel yeah. like, yeah. I thought that that scene in particular was really adorable. And normally, if I was watching the show, that would have passed by very, very quickly for me, and I wouldn't have picked up on any of the extra details. I don't know if you saw. Um, they were wearing little ties, and they oh, came they in. Yeah, so they came in with ties, and then they had these little chart flip flip chart papers. Yeah, and so the first one was the basic image cleaner package, and then the three points that they were recommending that Bob do to clean his image were rehab, oh goodness, find Jesus, <laughs> and diet. And then the second package they were trying to sell was the bad boy robot package, which, you know, like, clearly Gene was the one (laughs) behind that one. Oh, yeah. He named that one for sure. And that's reality show, boob job, and face job. (laughs) (laughs) Get a new face. Just... Just a whole new one. <laughs> so I thought that was so funny. And then Bob's just arguing like he doesn't need an image like overhaul at all. But even the like the the graph and then Linda's like She's so proud. <laughs> yeah. I really admire that about her. I think it's really cute. Mm-hmm. After that, Bob dreams of having an office job, but it quickly becomes a nightmare. And Tina suggests that Bob ask for a redo. So, I don't work an office job, but Bob's vision of that uh, that employment, is it accurate? I mean, I, I work an office job, but I don't have a cubicle. Yes. Okay. Um, That's very true. So, it's a very different... But, I mean, I do sign birthday cards. Yeah? <laughs> which Bob was not a fan of. I mean, I guess it's accurate. He actually seems really happy in his dream, which is funny. Like, he's... He's having a good time. He seems to be enjoying the terrible Borat jokes and whatever it is with the ramen and the tea. Bob seems genuinely pleased in his dream and then wakes up screaming. So (laughs) Uh, I actually like Tina's idea for a redo. But then, of course, Bob just takes it way too far. You can't go to someone's house. Yeah. That's weird. You could send them an invitation to come back to the restaurant. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Which... Knowing the Moody Foodie, you probably wouldn't. Bob surprises the Moody Foodie at his home, but the critic is resistant. He ends up taking the critic hostage and attempting to force him to eat his burger. The other restaurant owners join him, hoping to get a redo as well. A delivery man comes by the house and they hold him hostage too. I really like that the critic is punny too, (laughs) because he's got his little taser and he goes, Oh, this doesn't work that well. Hmm, I'm going to write them a review. I am not shocked. (laughs) 
perfect. <laughs> Everyone in this town loves puns. I just, I get it, guys. I love them too. Yeah, me too. Mm-hmm. So is this the moment in the episode that kind of just loses you? I don't know if I'm, I guess, yes. I was going to say I didn't know how I felt about it, but I think that's the line for me. So, like, we find out where Bob draws a line a little bit later on. Yeah. But for me, the line was that right there. Like, that's too far. This part of the episode really reminded me of another episode of a TV show called It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Uh, the episode titled Patty's Pub, The Worst Bar in Philadelphia, because they also take a critic hostage after he gives them a bad review. And they try to force him to write a new review for the restaurant. But for that show, it makes perfect sense because they're all really terrible people. Yep. And they always do terrible things. And they always take things way too far. Mm -hmm. So it really works with that tone of the show. But... They're kinder to this critic. Like, Bob is kind, actually fairly kind to him. Like, he just wants him to eat the burger. So he's not torturing him. He's not no. calling him names. He's just saying, can you please eat this burger? Like, tell me it's not terrible. Well, it's everyone else that's yeah. actually crazy in the scene, right? Mm-hmm. It's just, it's mob mentality, though. You get around people and they're all angry and you've got the one guy you hate tied up. Oof. Tran and Reggie and Pepe, like, they all are actually terrible restaurant owners. Like, they, yeah. they actually produce really crappy food. So mm-hmm. their anger is much more founded in the fact that they're the type of people that are not willing to change. Bob releases the delivery man, and Reggie gives the moody foodie a wet willy. Later that day, Bob has embraced the situation by offering half off if you bring in the bad review. As the critic calls the police, he eats Bob's burger and forgets to speak. Because he's making those little moany noises. Mm, mm, it's a good burger. Gross me <laughs> out so much. So, like, when the 911 operator was like, oh, it's one of you guys again, I was like, that's exactly how I feel in this moment right now. Oh, I really? Was, like, so grossed out. Like, he was <laughs> way too in love with Bob's burger at that point that I was uncomfortable in that moment. I've eaten with people like that. Oh, gosh. Where I'm they start eating something, that. and they're like, mmm, oh, this is so but for, like, good. the duration <laughs> of the burger or whatever it is they're eating. <laughs> the whole meal? No, not the whole meal. Usually, like, just the first couple of bites. But a burger's not that big, so maybe he just did it the whole time. <laughs> the last little bit, he's like, mmm, that was so good. <laughs> Your face right now. It's I wish so people could see it. Gross. <laughs> I just. I'm sorry if you're one of those people. I don't. Yeah, I'm not a fan. <laughs> don't make noise when you eat. So we looked up the movie Tin Cup because I wanted to see first what it was about and also if it had really bad reviews. And I checked Rotten Tomatoes and the tomato meter. So that's the critics is 69%, which is not great. But we're not believing critics' reviews, right? That's but the, the whole audience, premise of this episode. But the audience score is 65, so it's even worse. Um. <laughs> so I guess this really wasn't the greatest movie. Summary of this movie is, A washed-up golf pro working at a driving range tries to qualify for the U.S. Open in order to win the heart of his successful rival's girlfriend. That sounds like a terrible movie. It really does sound quite bad. I, the joke is just it goes on and on in the in the episode. So I thought there must be some sort of merit. But isn't the joke, some of the jokes in the episode as well, making fun of how bad that movie is? Yeah. Well, Bob is saying it's a terrible movie, right? But he's never actually seen it. So he doesn't know if it's bad. But wasn't it playing in the last scene? They ended up watching it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. They ended up watching the movie Tin Cup. And actually, fun fact... I read a little bit of behind-the-scenes stuff about that moment. And the Wet Willie scene at the end of the episode is a homage to a similar torture scene in the Quentin Tarantino movie Reservoir Dogs. Really? Yeah. They do something similar. While the episode was in production, Michael Madsen, who's known for his role as Mr. Blonde in Reservoir Dogs, was accidentally dropped off at the studio on his way to work on a different project. But once he noticed that the episode had a Reservoir Dogs homage, he asked to be in it, and he recorded a part. So he ends up voicing Kevin Costner's role in the scene where the family and the patrons of Bob's Burgers are watching Tin Cup. 
So one of the guys from Reservoir Dogs is playing as Kevin Costner's character just in the voiceover. Just wow. weird, right? That's so meta for me. Like, I think you might have lost me. <laughs> <laughs> you, might have, you might have to re-explain that to me <laughs> later. Yeah, it's it's a little interesting. Like, just an actor from a movie that you're making an homage to ends up getting dropped off at your studio and then does a voiceover for a different actor. <laughs> It's very bizarre. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's kind of cool, though. Yeah. I didn't realize that it was a homage to anything. I haven't seen Reservoir Dogs in years. But I did get the feeling like there was something there. Like there had to be some kind of reference because it's felt very intentional. Yes, it did feel intentional. I did actually kind of like that moment. As gross as it is. The Wet Willy moment? Yeah. I like the way that Reggie just dances around like back and forth and he's wagging his finger. It's gross. But it's funny. But the song is what makes it funny to me. Oh, like, okay. that's why I thought it was great. But the Wet Willie moment, like, if there wasn't a humorous overtone, like, a, of the song, I would have hated it. I would have hated oh, it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, but I find it so great that that's where Bob draws the line. Like, they've kidnapped and tied people up and, like, forced them to eat food. But Bob's like, no, no, like, you can do the Wet Willie. Yeah, he's like, oh, I can't do that. I can't do that. I do like that Bob turns the bad review into something positive. It's nice to know that he's not still upset about it. But it was implied that it was actually Jean, Louise, and Tina that came up with that idea. Oh, really? Because when the person comes in with the the coupon or the thing or the bad review saying, are you still doing, was it 50 or 20% off? Yeah, 50% off. Um, And Tina, I think it's Tina, says, uh, brought to you by such and such company like the the three names that mm-hmm. that they had pitched during their little business meeting for Bob's right. image right so okay. um it seems like Bob would have just carried on like nothing had ever happened if if the kids hadn't thought of that right so it was their idea and then Bob put it into action mm-hmm. by putting in the paper so it's just okay. like a cute kind of like fatherly like endorsing of maybe he maybe he gave them an allowance for it <laughs> oh i like that that's cute And then we have a special credit sequence with Reggie's little dance at the end in the restaurant. It looks like some sort of, like, cowboy two-step something or other, I don't know, country dances. Uh, I don't know any of their names. (laughs) Boot scootin'. He's just, he's got this cute little dance and then this kind of crazy looking look. In his eye, yeah, yeah, totally. I agree. I actually think that that might be my favorite part of the episode, and it's not even technically <laughs> part of the episode. Really? Yeah. Okay. So it's not all the kids and their business meeting with their uh, ties. You know it's the kids with their business meeting. You're yeah. Right. That's my okay. favorite part. Okay. All right. So let's get to our burgers. I have three. Uh, I have, have two. And okay. I would like to throw myself on the sword first, um, <laughs> okay. because you've had considerable more experience creating burgers, given that you are a lead podcaster. This is really hard. Yeah? It's <laughs> tough to come up with the puns? <laughs> Maybe it was just this episode. Like, I actually love puns, and I was like, I'm so excited for this. I couldn't think of anything for this, really. So okay. I came up with the Desperado Burger. Okay. And that would be a buffalo burger with just like the regular toppings that would come on a burger. And that's because Bob is so desperate to win (laughs) the Moody Foodie over. Okay. That's cute. The Desperado burger. I like it. Um, do you want to do one for one? Yeah. My first burger is one bad re blue, which would come with blue cheese on it and then lettuce and onions and whatever else that goes on a burger. You get to choose your toppings on that one other than the blue cheese. That one's mandatory. Even when a burger says, like, mandatory toppings, they're not mandatory. I'm totally no. the type of person to be like, I want this, 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 and this on my burger. Yeah, me too. But. That's why I like Harvey's. They do it your way. <laughs> if Harvey's listens in on this, you should totally get a, like, a little, like, royalty or whatever those things Ooh. are called from that plug. That was so good. Yeah. Um... So my, oh, actually, I did have three burgers. My second burger is the Stuck in the Middle burger. Oh, cute. And I was thinking that that would be two patties, and they have to be beef because, like, Bob doesn't use outside meat, and then just <laughs> and then just uh, cheese in the middle. So the cheese would be what's stuck in the middle. Oh, cute. Okay, I like that. Any specific kind of cheese? Ooh. Uh, I'm going to go with jalapeno cheddar, because that's mm. my favorite. Okay. 
Uh, my second is the overdone and rye. Oh, I was trying to think of a pun for that. That's really good. But it would, is it going to be overdone? No, it's just a joke. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's just a pun. Because no one wants an overdone burger. Right, right? Yeah. No. Uh, it would come on rye bun. Oh. Yeah. Uh, that's really smart. Yeah. My last one is the B&E burger. And it oh. would be uh, beef and eggs. Oh, nice. Okay. I like it. The yeah. B&E. Aww. <laughs> I don't think anybody actually really wants to eat a B&E burger, but... You can make a bacon and egg. Oh. Yeah. Look at look at your making my burger better. <laughs> Why didn't I think of that? It's a Now it's the bacon and egg burger. She has a fourth burger now. No, 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 no. I'm just, I'm just helping you out here. Um, and my last one does not sound appealing at all, but it's just a reference to the show. The wet chili. Ew. <laughs> so it would have chili on top. So just like a chili burger. That's a thing, right? They have chili dogs, oh, chili burgers. Oh, because it's wet willy. I just got Yeah, it. wet chili. Wet willy. <laughs> Jason's gross. probably going to be like, eh, that one's gross. When yeah, he listens. Yeah, yeah. it's, yeah. That, you know, I don't know if I want to end on that note. <laughs> like, um, okay, well, we won't end on that note because we're going to decide which one's our burger of the week. Mm. So you pick, okay, I will pick my favorite of yours and you pick your favorite of my burgers. So I have the overdone and rye, wet chili, and one bad re blue. One bad re blue. Okay, that's your favorite of mine. Yeah. All right, so that's the one we've got up in the in the ring for okay. co- the competition. And Not, mine were the desperado burger, the stuck in the middle burger, and the B and E burger. Hmm. I think my favorite is the B and E burger. Um, I'm okay with that one being ours because okay. you contributed to making it better. Because mine was originally just, like, not super smart. And I was like, your burger's made of beef. But then you're like, it could be beef, bacon, and eggs. Mm. So I think that it was a joint effort to make that one. Oh, okay. So we both win if we pick that one instead of having a tiebreaker. But is it dramatic? <laughs> what do you mean? Why does it need to be dramatic? Because dun, dun, dun. I don't know. <laughs> It's the final crowd. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> um, well, we could probably think of it. I think that that both beanie, the beanie burger captures the show. Okay. It's not an outside meat. Mm-hmm. It's not overdone and dry. <laughs> it's Bob I, approved. Yeah. So like, okay. cause it would be something that he might actually serve. Right. Okay. Which is, I think keeps it authentic. So what do you want to do? Do you want to ask? For a tiebreaker, or do you want to... No, I think it's a good idea to use the one that we both contributed to. Yeah. So our burger this week will be the B&E burger. Yeah. Bacon and egg, not yes. beef and egg. Well, it would have beef and then bacon and egg, right? Right, you know? but not just solo beef mm-hmm. and egg. Yeah. Oh, Bob. Hopefully we don't have too many more B&E burger episodes. <laughs> Yeah, I yeah. agree. It's a bit too uh too far out there for me. Yeah. And that will bring us to the end of Burger of the Week, a Multiverse Radio production. Thank you so much for listening, and thank you, Samantha, for joining me this week. You're welcome. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. If you like our show, please leave a rating and a review on iTunes. We'd really appreciate it. If you have a comment or a punny burger name that you'd like to share, you can find us on Twitter at Multiverse Radio or Facebook at Multiverse Radio Podcast. And you can also always visit our website, multiverseradio.ca. We will see you next week for our review of Season 2, Episode 8, Bad Tina.